Greetings and welcome to the RC Wall Vacuum Channel. Uh, today's video is going to be the, uh, the first in a series of videos I'm going to do on aluminum anodizing. And I also will cover the uh, removal of existing anodizing and coloring too, so you can put your own, your own flavor on there. Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing uh, anodizing aluminum, and uh, you don't really need nothing too fancy. Um, I opted to go with a, a kit from a company called Caswell Plating. It's convenient because they're just like an hour and a half down the road from me. And uh, I figured I'd start with uh, a, a kit that's already put together, all the legwork's done by someone who knows what they're actually doing. And uh, so today's video, I'm just going to kind of cover the kit itself and some accessories you're going to need. And then in future videos, I'll start doing some anodizing. Uh, the Roven Franken truck's going to be getting most of the anodizing for now and then uh, move on as I, I make the new parts for other, other vehicles. Well, let's go over the kit right now. So anodizing is a, uh, basically a quick step process. And uh, your, your surface preparation is one of the most important because uh, what you, uh, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, you gotta get the, the grease and stuff off of there before you even try to anodize it. The other issue is you gotta make sure you get the, uh, the type of surface you want on the final part before you even attempt the anodizing, because anodizing will not do it. It's not like paint where it's going to cover up any blemishes or stuff like that. So once you get the surface uh, cleaned up good and get it the uh, surface uh, finish on there you want, then you start going through the actual chemical process. And the, the first step is going to be another degreasing process. And um, after that, and after that, then you, you run into the uh, the deoxidizer, desmut area. You can insert your own joke there. Then you go to the anodizing, and after that, you go into the dyeing if you prefer, if you want dye, and then you go into a sealing operation. So the the kit here, to, to follow through on that process, the kit over here starts with these. You get uh, four four buckets with lids on it. Then you get these two twenty quart stainless kettles. As far as the use of these, the kettles and the buckets, most of these processes require heating. So the, the degreasing stage, you want to be in around 140 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit with no agitation. And then the uh, deoxidizer stage, then you're down to like 110 Fahrenheit for that with no agitation. And then at the anodizing, that you, gotta, that you almost got to cool depending on your atmospheric conditions. Uh, that needs to be around 72 degrees is about optimum. And you got you got to agitate the uh, the acid acid water mix, and then um, after that, then the dyeing is done around 140 degrees, and also no agitation on that. And then um, the final sealing part is uh, done around 210 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where I assume that stainless that kind of is going to come into place, and there's no agitation with that. So why there's uh, six uh, containers, I'm not really sure. Uh, I guess they maybe give you a, the ability to run different uh, different flavored dyes or whatever in there. But um, mo most of the processes, these lower heat ones, I'm going to use immersion heaters, which the kit does not include. you got to get your own immersion heater. And then for the, uh, the sealant stage, I'm going to, it needs to go 210. Then I got a hot plate that I'm going to use on, on that stainless 20-quart uh, kettle there to, to, for, for sealing that in. Then they also include this agitation pump, which is used to the, uh, in the actual anodizing stage. And a spray bottle for rinsing off with distilled water through each stage. And um, they did uh, send some sample pieces of aluminum to uh, test with. I think, one of the, I think the longer one is actually meant to lay across your anodizing tank to attach your parts to. I'm going to be making something different out of uh, Delron. And uh, I'm going to rig it up such that it's sits across the bucket and I can hang wires. I'll probably take an axiom and a lot of parts I will TIG weld a piece of TIG wire onto uh, on the actual part and use that as the, uh, the electrode to hold it down into the, uh, the tank. Otherwise they do include this ti uh, titanium wire that you can use to attach your parts with. But I want to have a good electrical, pro electrical connection because one of the things is that anodizer is one of those things is uh, as the process goes along the electrical uh, resistance goes up on your part so that's why I want to think about welding the, the actual wire right to the part and then I ain't got to worry about that, that uh, oxidation causing electrical uh, conductivity issues. So as far as the chemicals go, 
Uh, start off here with this aluminum degrees. Well, actually, let me go back a little bit farther. If uh, if you have anodizing or chrome or something on your part, they do supply this this stuff here uh, to strip that off. I don't know if it's a lie or something like that. And uh, so anyhow, then uh, then you go in your, the, they have the degreaser and uh, that mixes with, with distilled water. That'll be in one of those plastic boxes. Now that'll, that'll require an immersion heater. And then it goes into the deoxidizer, desmud area, and that's a liquid, and that'll go into one of those plastic buckets too. That does require some, that'll be another immersion heater. Then uh, once you get to the actual anodizing stage, that will also go into one of the plastic buckets. And for that, the, uh, you have to supply your own sulfuric acid. Uh, battery acid is what's recommended. I think that's a 37%. Um, you will get some funny looks at the uh, automotive supply parts when you ask for a gallon of battery acid. I know I, did. I only get two quarts now. I got to go back and get the other two quarts later on. And uh, they supply this anodized fume suppressant. You uh, lay that down on top of the uh, the the, uh, the liquid, and um, that helps to suppress the sulfuric acid fumes coming coming out of there. It's one of these plastic balls. I'm not sure. I know these go down on the sealant stage to hold heat in, help insulate the heat in there. I don't remember if these go in on the anodizers. I think they do go on top of the acid to help uh, suppress the fumes more. I, I'm not 100% certain on that. And got a color wheel for mixing the dyes. And then, of course, over here they got the lead plates that are going to be used as the cathode. And the part itself is used as the, uh, the part itself is the, uh, the anode. So that's what's supplied in the kit. Uh, there's two different state, two different kits they supply. There's this one, and there's this one plus a power supply. Um, I do a lot of work electronics, so I have a much, bunch of power supplies around here, so I just stuck with that. So let me go over uh, some of the uh, accessory parts you'll have to get. So over here, some of the accessories. You're going to need a timer, unless you have a natural clock in your head. Uh, like I had mentioned before, the sulfuric acid. I'll get two quarts, but I need to get two more. I got a couple of, uh, I think these are, yeah, these are 1500 watt immersion heaters. And then for the sealant stage, which goes to like about 210, I got this, uh, this um, hot, hot plate here and I will use one of the stainless tanks to heat that up on. And then of course you need to dye, so I have a violet and a red. Apparently the reds are tough to dye, or yeah, the reds are tough color to do. We'll see how that goes. And then of course the heart of the operation is the, uh, the DC power supply, you want to have a constant current supply, as like I said before, as the process goes and the oxidation, anodizing is just a controlled oxidation of a part, and as that oxidation occurs, electrical resistance of the oxide cranks up pretty high. So as your process goes, you gotta, you gotta keep cranking up the voltage higher and higher and higher to uh, <clears throat> get enough current to go through, to, to get to the current density you need to do the anodizing. So if you got a constant current supply, it will automatically adjust the voltage. And you need the bigger the part, the more power you need. This is a, a 30 volt and 30 amp, and that should that should supply for the parts I'm going to be doing now. And um, I think that's it for the accessory parts. So I still have to put together some sort of a table to uh, hold all this stuff. Probably for now, I'm just going to lay down saw horses and to get the process figured out. And uh, so that's it for today. I just wanted to cover the uh, the equipment and. If anybody's interested in doing uh, their own anodizing this Caswell kit, I would I'd say it's probably a good way to go. Um, like I said, you're going to need some, some spare parts. So that's all I'm going to cover for today. And in future videos, I'm going to be doing the anodizing. And Franken Trucks got some parts I'm going to anodize. And I'm going to make, uh, machine up some new uh, upper links for it and put some chrome molly uh, rod ends on there. And those will be anodized. And, uh, Eventually the holy grail is going to be to anodize the wall cage, but I'm going to have to go with bigger tanks and a bigger power supply for that. So, so in the meantime, thanks for watching.